I, I ordered them, rather. I sorted them. These aren't ranks. They're actual stress scores. So they're sorted from lowest to highest. And we can see that there's that linear effect. The scores seem to be increasing. The, number, the only two fives are near the end of the uh, column. And the person with a zero had a stress level of 10. Let's go through the calculations a bit. So we need to calculate the mean for stress. So what are the stress levels? They're here. Well, what's the average here in, these, in this column of data? It equals 26. So in our sample of 12 people, the average stress level was 26.750. And then the standard deviation was 12.70. I assume you know what mean and standard deviation are. Now for colds, flus, the y variable, we have a mean of 2.583. So on average, over the course of a year, people experience 2.6 rounded colds, and the standard deviation is 1.676. I'll note that for regression, when you're doing calculations, you usually need a minimum of three, I would even say four decimal places, but I only use three to save space in this presentation. So now we have our means and standard deviations. We also need to know what the correlation is. And again, I assume that you know how to calculate something like that. And in this case, it's 0.793. So as stress scores increase, colds also, number of colds also increase, and it's a correlation of 0.79. That's a very strong correlation. So now that we have those estimates of mean standard deviation correlation, we can figure out our slope. As a reminder of what the formula is, really pretty easy. So we multiply the correlation by the ratio of the standard deviation in y, which is colds, divided by uh, stress levels st standard deviation, and it gives us a slope or beta, equal 0 0.105. What does this mean? This means that as we increase stress scores by one unit, we expect on average an increase in colds equal to 0 0.105. Now that isn't really possible. How can you have 0 0.1 of a cold? But these scores on the stress uh, measure are much big, they range much more than at one point. Uh, from one point to one point. So it's very conceivable that somebody can have 10 units increase in stress, and that's when we'd expect about, ten, about one cold, one extra cold. So one unit equals 0.1 of a cold. 10 units increase in stress would equal about one extra cold. Now let's look at a unicept. The formula again, alpha equal the mean of y, so colds minus uh, the slope product by the mean of x. We can solve that simply. Mean 2.53 minus the slope, which we figured out here, times the mean of x, which is stress. Then we get a slope, uh, an intercept, or alpha, equal negative 0.226. What does intercept mean? I'll remind you. The intercept is the value of y, colds, when x, stress, is 0. So if somebody had 0 stress, we'd expect them to have experience zero colds. Now it's oh, close to zero, it's actually negative 0.226. A person can't experience negative colds, and that's an important point about the intercept, is that within sampling fluctuations, it may be somewhat less than zero, or a little bit higher than zero. And you can test that for statistical significance, but I'm not going to do that uh, in this presentation. But roughly speaking, the intercept is telling us that if your stress levels are zero, then your number of colds is probably going to be about zero, too. But it's actually, for the formula, we actually have to use this number, negative, two, two, uh, negative 0.226. Intercept and scatter plot. I'm re-showing it because I've, re I've adjusted something in that first scatter plot that I showed. I've, ex I've extended the y-axis to have a slight negative range and we can see that the regression line, if you bring it down all the way to zero on x, in the first scatter plot, I actually had a space there. To, it didn't go quite down to the zero. It wasn't lined up. Now I have adjusted it. And we can see the regression line, when it intersects the y-axis, colds and flus, it corresponds to roughly negative point something small. It's about negative point two two. So that's where the connection is between the intercept and the regression line. It's the, the intercept is the value of y when x is 0. And in this case, the regression line is corresponding to what we estimated the intercept to be, negative 0.226.
Now let's do some actual predictions on, based on the values that 